Hello everyone, welcome to Yoga TX. My name is Lauren and uh, for those of you who don't know, there was a quite a long time in my life where I had some knee injuries, some knee surgeries, I was on crutches for quite a while and you know at first I was felt really devastated because I thought oh this is the end of my yoga practice at least for you know while I'm on crutches or while I'm injured you know there's no there's no place in yoga for me uh, but I found out that's very untrue there's still a lot of things you can do if you are on crutches or if you are suffering from knee injury so that's what I would like to share with you guys today so we're gonna do kind of a flow that's got parallel poses and standing poses Poses, but we're gonna do them all on our back today. So this is a great way to modify, uh, particularly again, if you are on crutches or experiencing some sort of knee injury. That being said, please listen to your body, please practice carefully, and uh, be mindful if anything's not feeling right. So we're gonna go on and get started on our backs today. Finding Shavasana, just let the feet splay out. Maybe, you know, maybe this doesn't feel good on the knees. You know, you can keep them lifted upright, but either way, bring the eyes to rest closed, back to the palms, to the mat. And just allow gravity to take control a little bit. To surrender your body, to find your center. If you are not able to straighten your knee fully, you can always roll up a blanket or a towel or a pillow and place it under your knees to support that bend. We'll take two more deep breaths here. And we'll start by just activating the core a little bit, turning the palms down. Go ahead and hug the knees in just keeping them kind of at a 90 degree angle and just start to rock a little bit side to side, engaging your core, twisting a tiny bit. Just heating up the body a little. Again, nothing too intense, keeping the knees bent if you'd like. We'll take one more to either side. And then lower the feet back down, extend the feet long, really flex actively in those feet. If you need to bend the knees again, when I was practicing this after my surgery, I couldn't straighten my legs fully, so feel free to adjust however, but really flex as actively as you can in the toes. Like you're standing, this is kind of this laying down variation of Tadasana mountain pose. And then we'll start to kind of come into this modified sun salutation here. So inhale, lift the arms overhead. Maybe the gaze lifts, palms connect. And exhale, hands to heart center. Again, engaging actively in the feet. Let's find that breath three more times. Inhale up. Fingertips dragging along the ground. Exhale, heart center. Noticing if your toes are starting to feel it a little. Inhale up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And we'll find one more of these. Inhale up. And this time as we exhale, use your core to lift up to sit again. Bend the knees if you'd like. And fold forward, kind of like you're in a standing forward fold. Feet continue to activate, straightening the knees as much as your injury allows. Inhale, lift halfway, palms slide closer to the knees. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, roll back, coming into this modified fish pose. You can point the toes here if you'd like. Roll the heart open, pressing into the forearms. This is a modification for Cobra. Exhale, roll down. And here we'll inhale, lift the feet, flexing actively. Palms come to touch overhead. Again, bending the knees as little or as much as you need. In this variation of downward facing dog, this reclined variation. 
and then exhale. You can either lower the legs straight down or bring the palms down and just lower them slowly, engaging the core, releasing the feet to the mat. We'll flow through these modified sun salutations a few more times, so extending the toes long, flexing actively in the feet. Inhale, the arms overhead. Exhale, engage the core and up and over, forward fold, flexing actively in the feet. Inhale, flatten the back, lift halfway, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Rolling through that core, finding that fish pose. Roll the heart open, palms just by the hips. Release the head. And exhale, roll through, lifting the legs, lifting the arms overhead in this downward dog variation, toes active, palms to touch. And then maybe draw the palms as you slowly lower the legs, engaging the core. Twice more, slide those legs out long. Again, feel free to bend the knees as much as you need. Inhale up. And exhale. Forward fold. Kind of like you're riding a wave there. Inhale, lift up. Rolling through. Pressing into the forearms. Drop the head. Roll the heart open, exhale, curl through the spine, lift the legs, lift the arms overhead, really trying to keep your legs perpendicular to the mat. And then exhale, palms come to the side, slowly lower the legs, release the toes. We'll go through this one more time, just warming up our back body, warming up our core, exhale, forward fold. Inhale to lift halfway and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Rolling through, pressing into the palms. Roll the heart open. Exhale, release. And inhale, palms touch, toes lift. And then here, we'll just kind of bend the knees again. Maybe your knees don't bend very far. I know right after my knee surgery, this was about as much bend in my knees as I got. But just release the back into the mat. And we'll start to maybe rock and roll a little on the spine, really holding onto the hamstrings, a place away from the knees, and maybe lift up into boat pose, Navasana. You can drop the toes if you'd like or lift, engaging the core, listening to your body, rolling the heart open. This flow is also good if you've got wrist injuries and all the chaturangas and the down dogs just aren't doing it for you. Take one more deep breath here. And exhale, rock and roll along the spine. Building momentum, lifting yourself up. Again, feel free to drop the toes. Just really try to roll the heart forward and open. Maybe play with lifting one toe and the other. And exhale, release, rock and roll. Build a little momentum, massage the spine, and find your way back to that boat pose, Navasana. We'll take one more deep breath here, maybe drop the toes. And then we'll plant the toes, plant the whole soles of the feet about hip distance apart. You can take it a little wider, maybe walk the feet out a little more if you'd like. Really focus on getting the spine long. And we're gonna come into a modified variation of cat-cow pose. So rather than being on our hands and knees, we're just gonna hold the backs of our thighs. Again, if you have severe knee injury or if you have had surgery recently, sitting cross-legged can also be a big challenge. So this is a great way to get around that. So start by lengthening the spine, rolling the heart open, lifting the gaze. And as you exhale, curl through the spine, rounding back onto the tailbone, chin tucks. And then inhale, roll forward. 
gaze, heart opens. Exhale, roll back. Let's move through this a few times. Inhale forward, really going at your own pace. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, roll forward. And exhale, round the spine again. I had a screw in my shin for a while, so putting any pressure on my hands and knees was really difficult. This is a great modification for that. So we'll go ahead and keep, keep the feet where they are, spine really long, knitting the rib cage together, and inhale, the arms up to the sky, coming into this modified variation, if you will, of chair pose. Still engaging the groins, engaging the psoas muscles, engaging our core. Release the shoulders away from the ears. I'll take one more deep inhalation here. And as we exhale, let's go on and twist over to the right, palms opening up. Inhaling back through, really feeling our toes in the mat here feeling our feet connecting, especially if you've been on crutches. Your foot doesn't press into the ground too much, so really feel that and enjoy that. Inhale as we lengthen through the spine. Exhale, twist over to the left. And we'll just find a flow here for a minute. Inhale as we lift. Exhale as we twist open. Inhale, lift. Exhale, twist open. Inhale up. We'll do this one more time to either side. Exhale. Engaging our core here. Engaging the breath and ultimately just connecting with our bodies again. Plugging in after turning it off maybe from hurt. And then exhale. The hands will come to the heart center. We'll inhale, lift long through the spine. And exhale, twist over to the right, bringing that left elbow to the right knee. Again, just like you would in a regular chair pose, but just seated with no pressure. With each inhalation, we grow a little taller in the spine. And with each exhalation, twist a little deeper. Maybe look over that right shoulder. And then exhale, uncork yourself, coming back to center. Well, inhale, lift up. And exhale, twist to the other side. Again, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Being mindful that we're not disjointing our shoulder, really plugging that shoulder in, rolling the heart open, lengthening through the spine, palms pressed to, into each other gently. One more deep breath here. And exhale, back to center. And then we'll go ahead and move through one of those vinyasas again. Roll down all the way to your back, engaging the core. Inhale, arms overhead, feet flex actively. Lengthen throughout the whole back body. Exhale, release. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale as we lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Rolling back through the spine. Maybe feeling it pretty good in the hips right now. Plant the palms and the forearms. Press down, roll the heart open. And exhale as you roll down. Lift into that down dog variation. Lengthening through the spine. Again, bend the knees as much as you'd like or need. And releasing the palms, go ahead and lower the legs, maybe bending them down at a certain point. And then we'll go ahead and draw the knees and again, rock up into that boat pose. Maybe aligning ourselves on our sits bones a little better. And then exhale, release. So here we're gonna go on and draw our feet out at about a 90 degree angle. Again, you know, when I had my knee injury, it really helped me to keep the knees really bent 
but keep those toes flexing actively. If you're feeling good and you're just trying this out, you're welcome to straighten the legs. But again, please listen to your body, practice mindfully, sit up on the tailbone so we're not sinking back, but really engaging here. We'll go ahead and inhale, lift the arms up, and exhale, start to fold forward. Maybe this is as far as we go today. Really roll the heart open. Maybe you come down a little further. Yogi's choice, find your edge and play with it. Again, if you feel any pulling, twinging, anything like that, maybe back off a little. We'll take another deep breath here. And exhale. And then planting the left palm in the center of the mat. Inhale, draw the right arm across the body. Really opening up. So you can imagine if we were doing this pose standing, what it would look like. But again, we're just taking all the pressure off, but still getting all of the same benefits. Exhale, release. Switch that out with the right palm. Inhale, roll the heart open. And exhale, draw it back through. So this is where we're gonna kind of play a little bit. We're gonna come into a modified variation of triangle pose. So keeping the feet about where they are at about kind of a 90 degree or less of an angle. We'll come down to our backs and roll the right toes out to the side. Again, bend the knee if you need here. Keep the left toes active and pointing up, kind of like you're setting up for triangle pose. Maybe even the gaze comes across the right fingertips. And then it might feel a little funky. You might have to kind of wiggle yourself over. But just lift your torso up a little, bringing that right hand either to the shin or if you're feeling really flexible, all the way to your foot. And then just lift the gaze, lift the left arm up in this reclined triangle variation, still getting the stretch through the side body still getting the stretch in the hips, still having the active engagement of the feet, the head can gaze down at the toes, or up and away at the hand, yogi's choice. One more deep breath in. And then exhale, lift yourself through center, both toes face the sky, and then we'll swap it out. Drawing the left toes over, kind of moving them more flat against the floor. Right toes stay up. And then we'll just boop, pick it up. Lengthen through the body. Gaze can be down or up. Again, feet active. Getting that nice stretch through the side body, through the hip. Really plugging that left hip in still, trying to lengthen out. One more deep breath in. And then exhale. Back through center. We can draw the knees in. And here you have the option. You can either extend one leg out or again, if that doesn't feel so hot, plant the left foot down, keep the knee slightly bent, and we'll just lift the right leg, grab the back of the thigh here, the hamstring, and start to straighten that leg, flexing in the toes. Again, just finding your edge. Particularly when we're working with injuries, we should be mindful about what our body needs. We'll take three breaths here. Just stretching into that hamstring very gently, feeling the back body against the mat, feeling the shoulders relax and release. Feeling the head relax and release. Feeling the sole of that left foot just gently against the mat. We'll take one more deep breath in. Exhale, lower down, pressing the right foot against the mat. And we'll just simply swap it out, lifting the left toes again, maybe Maybe this is you, maybe you've got something going on and this is feeling great and you're stretching it out. Or maybe you'd like to extend it a little more. Wherever you're at, 
flex into that heel, flex into those toes, and just, you know, just let gravity, let this pose kind of stretch you. There's really no pulling needed. There's no pushing. Just kind of settle in. We'll take one more deep breath here. And then we'll just lower it down. Maybe hug the knees in. Again, releasing the sacrum, releasing the back body, maybe rock a little side to side. And again, you know, some variation of this, maybe that you're used to is this, but when you've got a lot of knee injury, that kind of angle, that kind of pressure can really do a number. So just take the pressure off and still get the same benefit in the spine. And then we'll go ahead and lift both legs up to the sky, flex the feet, palms down by the sides. <sighs> Taking a moment to just let the blood flow back out of the legs. <sighs> and then if you'd like, you can kind of lower them like a gate all the way down or lower them to a certain point and then just bend the toes, releasing them. We'll go ahead and Extend the legs out long, allow the feet to splay open, coming back into that Shavasana pose. Again, roll up a blanket, slide it under the knees, put a pillow under there if you'd like, and then just bring the backs of the palms to the mat. <sighs> Closing the eyes. And again, just allowing your body to surrender. Maybe you've released a little something here. Maybe taking a moment to experience some joy that though we might not be at our tip top shape, there is still so much we can do. We'll take three more breaths here. One more deep breath in. And then slowly, we'll just draw the feet in, draw the knees up. You can rock over to one side and give yourself a little help on the way up. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today, yogis. And uh, know that if you're practicing with injuries, there's just a lot available to you. There's a lot you can do. And uh, I hope to create more of these types of injury-friendly videos in the future as well. So if you like the video, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and check out some of my other videos on my playlist. Thank you. Namaste.